everybody. Welcome to my Facebook Live. I'm Kathy Hester of Healthy Slow Cooking. And today we're going to talk about how to make your coffee budget a lot better. So if you're going to some of the fancy dancy chain coffee stores like I did last week, I realized I spent $5 on just a matcha latte because I had soy milk in it. We're not going to talk about tea today, though. We're really going to talk about coffee. So I'm going to show you really just how ridiculously easy it is to make your own cold brew coffee. You don't have to spend a lot of money for pre-made at the store and you can make any kind of coffee that you want or even a grain coffee that doesn't have any caffeine in it. So either way, the process works the same. I'm also going to show you how to make a syrup to use in your coffee. So today we're going to make a cardamom vanilla syrup. And it goes really well with rose water as well, if you like that kind of floral flavor like I do. And it works magic in cold brew coffee. So another thing, let me grab this, that you can do too is you can buy your own syrups if you don't want to make them or if you're trying to avoid sugar. This one has sugar in it, but it's organic. It's hazelnut. That's a flavor I'm having trouble replicating. Um, vanilla is really easy. Um, lavender is easy and you would use the same process I'm going to show you. Um, but this liquid planet I think is pretty delicious. So if you don't want to be bothered with making syrup, this is another way you could go. So let's start off by m making the syrup. And really, it's kind of ridiculously easy. You're going to use sugar, water, and in this one we've used a split vanilla bean. And if you don't happen to have a really fancy dancy vanilla bean, I, I hoard mine. They come in here and I use them on special occasions. And with vanilla being so expensive right now, you could certainly use vanilla extract or you could decide this is cardamom syrup. And I wouldn't blame you one tiny, tiny little bit. So at this point, I'd love to know if any of you guys have ever made your own coffee syrups or syrups at all. Because um, the process is pretty easy. So what we're going to do is we're going to put one cup of water, one cup of sugar. Now the sugar is going to make it thick. And all we want to do is dissolve the sugar in here and then it, the syrup part is ready. Since we're going to be infusing it with cardamom pods, we're, what I'm going to do is get the sugar to melt and then I'm going to take it off the heat and let the vanilla and the cardamom beans uh, just sit in there, cardamom pods, sorry, sit in there until they really infuse a little bit stronger. I'm using about 30 cardamom pods and one split vanilla bean. And you can make it however you want to make it. So let's get this puppy on. Okay. I think that's good. I'm just going to go ahead and stir a little bit of this so it's very easy to tell when it dissolves, right? And I'm going to go ahead, the heat will still help get some of the flavor out of those things. Yeah, Dawn said she hasn't made coffee syrup yet, but she will. And so if you were making a lavender syrup, you would do the same thing, only you'd have culinary lavender buds in here. And you don't have to stir it that much. I'm really just futzing with it because it's there. And we'll let that go for a little while. Let's see if I can turn it up just a little bit more. And while, that, while we're waiting on this to uh, meld and the sugar to dissolve, I'm going to go ahead and show you how I make French press iced coffee. So you need a French press. But do you really? No. You could also use a mason jar and pour it through a nut milk bag at the end. Because what you're going to do, and I'm sure if you bought them online, you've seen um, steep for 12 to 24 hours. Well, all that means is we're going to mix it up in here, and we're not going to plunge it until 12 to 24 hours. Um, you can use any um, regular ground coffee, or if you're grinding it yourself, you can do a coarse ground. So I have just fine luck with, this was just already ground. I think you can kind of see maybe if I get in the light. It's fairly coarsely ground, just by default. What you don't want to use is espresso because that's just going to go through the little screens and it's going to muddy everything up. Okay, let's take a little stir. And 
And I also told you we'd look at something. I, I'm trying to really limit my caffeine intake. Not telling you what to do. You can make this with full caffeine or double caffeine. I've been making half-calf coffee, but this Ticino, and I hope I'm pronouncing it right, this has no caffeine at all. So it's more of a grain coffee. And let's see if I can. It has things like carob, barley, chicory, dates, almonds, figs, and hazelnut flavor. So this already has kind of that hazelnut flavor that I like in a coffee. So if you're using regular coffee or a, a coffee-like blend, what I usually do is I pour it in here because we want it to be a concentrate. So you're going to either add milk or water to it when it's done. So I usually go about to where this line is. And really there's just, there's no reason that you, you can make it stronger or less strong as you want to. It's all up to you. And see how the sugar is pretty much dissolved? I'm going to let it go just a little bit longer at a lower heat while we're talking. And you can smell a little bit of the vanilla already. So, okay. So we poured this into our French press. The next step is we're going to pour some water in here. And I even do it a super lazy way. So I pour about that much water. And then instead of even using a spoon, I just stir it. You want to make sure the grounds are really wet because that's how it's going to infuse the water and brew properly. So you want to pour it about to where your plunger is going to go. And in this case, that's probably just shy of four cups. Okay, so then I'm going to put my plunger in here. And I want to keep it at the top, just like when you're brewing coffee, right? And you have your little timer. And ta-da, that's really it. So this is going to sit here for 12 to 24 hours, depending on what you want. And then I'm going to plunge it. And I will show you, actually, I'm going to go ahead and stop that, too. Let's pull it. You see how clear it got? Now, if you choose to use a different sweetener, but you can. It's not going to be thick like a normal syrup. That's going to be your only thing. So, and also the sugar helps preserve it and makes it last longer. But either way, any homemade syrups that I make, I store in the fridge just to be safe. Because as you can see, some of the vanilla beans are in there, kind of coming out of the vanilla. And you just want to be on the safer side. So you could... You could have some right now if you wanted to. Let me taste it, and I'll tell you. Yeah, the vanilla is real strong, and that's because the vanilla, the vanilla beans are cut in half and then sliced down the middle so the vanilla beans can come into contact with it. But the cardamom needs a little longer time to steep. So we're on the right track. So basically, if you made this tonight and you made your, your iced coffee concentrate, in the morning, this would be ready, and so will this. So it'll be perfect to make your coffee with. Now, this is one that I've drank some of. So it's a little teeny tiny one, right? And so I still use kind of the same thing. It's, it's, it's just what I do. It makes it easy. And you can see how dark, maybe if I actually hold it where you can see it, you can see how dark that is. Have any of you guys made cold brew coffee? And if so, what method do you use? Have you made it in a French press? Have you made it in a jar? Have you used something called a toddy maker or maybe some other crazy wacky thing? So I really want to know, and that way maybe I can show you something else. Though you can get, French presses can be expensive. You can get them so cheap at the thrift store. This is glass, so you can sterilize it in your dishwasher, so you don't have to worry about anything. So what I would do and is I would take, and I'm going to switch this out for no caffeine concentrate that I made, which also looks pretty dark. In fact, this Ticino is really dark, and you can kind of see that. So I like mine about half and half. And so if you didn't want any... Um, milk in it at all at this point you maybe add some water you can and then your syrup and 
top it off. This one is unsweetened organic soy milk. Soy milk is my favorite, though I've noticed in my area there's really a lot of um, oat milk. Oat milk and macadamia milk. Oh, Natalie Slater said she's used a toddy before. Yeah, yeah, you can, you know, I've never done it in an AeroPress. That would be interesting. A French press is just, it, it's kind of funny because Cheryl's always like, I don't know how to make the iced coffee. And I'm like, I'll show you. And every time I show her, she's like, really, there's not more to it? And I'm like, no, and now you really know how to do it, so you have to do it. So you just mix that up a little bit. And actually, the Ticino with the flavor you can really do this without sugar. So if you're trying not to have any syrups or things, I think that would be a good way to go. Um, and I love, I love the really strong hazelnut flavors that it has. And there's like almond. <laughs> Natalie says getting someone else to do it is my preferred method too. I know. Well, Cheryl's the one who like will put something back in the fridge with like a drop in it. And so we're working on that. So it's only been, what, 10 years so far. I think I, I, think I have time to win. Um, but you, can use, you could use a dark roast coffee. You can use a light roast coffee. You could use a flavored coffee. Um, and when you go somewhere like Starbucks and you get their cold brew, you just have whatever they cold brewed. And this way you can really customize it. Um, and I love doing it with the Ticino. I didn't know if that was going to work or not, but it's very strong and works exactly the same way. Um, and probably something like this would be a tall, since we did flavor, even though it's flavored coffee, we count that as a flavor. This would probably be five bucks. And I think the Ticino costs, I think, around $10 for a bag. And you're not, you're going through so little of it per batch that it's really not that big a deal. Same thing with coffee. What I do with regular coffee is I look for sales because iced coffee is a little different than cold, um, iced slash cold brewed coffee is different than hot coffee. So when you brew coffee with hot water, it brings out the acids. So if you have a sensitive stomach or you're getting a sensitive stomach, it's really much better to drink cold brew coffee because the acids aren't there. Um, and you're going to notice that with the flavor too. So if you're a person who loves the acids in coffee, you may not like cold brew coffee as much, but it's still easier to make. And basically when I make, I make it once a week or once every other week, it can last almost up to two weeks because we probably go 10 days without it, uh, without making it again. And you can mix it with any milk that you want. You can mix it with homemade milk, um, Obviously, if you go to a chain or a Starbucks or somewhere like that, there is sugar in their milk. Even if they're using plain milk, they're not using unsweetened. They may or may not be using organic. So you can buy organic coffee, organic milk, and you can use organic sugar in your own syrup. So there you go. And you're going to save, if you go every day, you're going to save a crap ton of money. <laughs> even if you go every once in a while, it's still fine to go and try something different. A lot of times I'll go and try a new syrup somewhere and then I'll come home and recreate it. So let me know what syrups you guys are interested in me making and I'll see if I can make a couple of recipes for that. If you have any questions about making iced coffee concentrate, cold brew method, put it in here. Um, Dawn is going to put in the link to the recipe to the syrup, even though you don't really need it. It's one cup to one cup. Um, <laughs> now he says that a crap ton U.S. dollars or Bitcoin. I think in either. I think Starbucks should have its own currency because I think that it's a little bit nutty. And I go too, so I'm no better than anybody else. Um, and, you know, it always gets me too, especially if they end up having something vegan, then I have to go try it. So... Anyhow, tell me how much money you guys end up saving. Also, um, a quick announcement is that I'm going to be doing a beginning Instant Pot online class. And I will put a link down to the sign up and I'll give you a little discount because you're watching my show. And I'll give you $5 off, so it would be $30. It's going to take place live April 21st at 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, and that's a Saturday. If you can't make it, don't worry, because you'll be able to watch it, watch it as many times as you want, and I'll come in to answer questions for people who can't show up live. So hopefully I'll see you there. So if you've got your Instant Pot still in the box, this is the class for you. 
So anyhow, you guys have a great, great week. And let me know if you want to see something particular next week. Okay? Have a great one. My Oh, there we go. My end button squished over. So sorry, I'm still saying.